Welcome back to DIY with KB. My name is Kiva and I teach people how to achieve the luxe look for less. In today's video, we're talking about the things you're doing that are ruining your home. I don't care how much money you've spent, how many hours you've spent curating your home. If you're doing any of these things, you need to stop immediately. Before we get into today's video though, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video and check me out on Instagram. Now let's get into this video so we can fix our homes. So coming in at number one, this thing that people do, it makes your house look cheap, it makes your house look ugly, it just looks plain bad, is you get paint that isn't the correct sheen as your wall. Have you ever had a little kid and they're like, oh mom, you know what would be really fun today? Let's just rub some Vaseline on the wall because that's what it looks like when you get a satin finish and then you put it on the wall that's painted with flat. It looks literally like you just took some oil and you're like, you know what? This is, this is what we're doing today. So let's stop doing that. I know that it can be really difficult because someone else painted your house. You don't know what they did. You don't want to pay them money. You don't want to call up that painter because he was annoying. He's showing you his butt crack all day. You just want to get things done. So what you need to do is you need to go over to your wall. You need to take a chip of that paint off and go to the paint store and have them match it. If you live in like a residential complex, you live in an apartment or a condo, chances are the painter got everything from one store Find out where that store is, go there and ask them to look up the account and then you're gonna be able to get the exact sheen that you want. So you, it's not like a guessing game. I'm telling you, that's exactly what happened to me. I was like, oh, I got this. This is the da, 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 finish. I'm telling you, the wall behind where I sit to take my meetings literally just looks like I took some Vaseline and I felt like the wall needed to be moisturized. Um, I guess I'm glad I did that for the wall, but it looks bad, right? So if we can get the correct paint, let's try and do that. Let's not try to mix and match paint. So if you're painting your house, you're painting your house a color and doing something like that, go ahead and get a sample size too, or go ahead and make sure that you're going to really close that top wall and you store that paint correctly so that if something happens, you scuff it or something like that, you can get the exact same paint color and the exact same sheen so that nothing looks awry. I'm telling you, this is going to make your spaces look so much better. And this is a mistake that I see people make all the time and it just looks bad, but we can fix it. Just have a little bit of foresight and I promise it's gonna be okay. The next thing that I see people do that just like drives me bonkers is that they scratch their floors all day long. I'm just like, Okay, so this is a 240 piece set of furniture pads. It was $7.99. Just go to Papa John's like one fewer time this month and then you're gonna be okay. Oh, they're falling everywhere. It's okay, but stop scratching your floors. I don't care if they're laminate floors. I don't care if they're peel and stick tiles. I don't care if it's hardwood floor. Let's not scratch the floor because floors are really cumbersome to replace and it can get expensive. I know even if you have laminate, it can still get expensive. It is cumbersome. If they don't have the exact right amount of tiles, you gotta get all new floors. Let's just not do that. I know everyone's like, well, you can just get like those little like paint sticks. That's true. Um, coming from someone who scratched an entire floor in my condo building, um, the crayons just aren't gonna get you where you think they're gonna get you. <laughs> they're just not gonna get you there. So let's just use the furniture pads. It just makes your house look so nice because I don't care if you spent all day long styling your coffee table, if there's like a big gash in the floor because it looks like a T-Rex came and just clawed it, that's what I'm gonna look at, right? So let's just be more conscientious of the floors. They can't just grow back, right? They're not gonna grow back. You're gonna have to replace them. You're gonna have to throw money into them. So let's just use furniture pads. It's, it's really an easy solution and it just makes your home look so much better. The scratching just looks bad. There's, I don't need to explain it to you. I don't need to justify it. It looks bad with scratches all over the floor. That is not a design aesthetic. It's not gonna be a design aesthetic. So just invest in these. They have them everywhere and it's a lifesaver. I'll go show you a floor. I'll put in a clip right here. Don't be like me. That's what I should have titled this video. Don't be like Kiva. Kiva's mistakes. Wow, let's not do that. Okay, so we've talked about the furniture pads. Oh, okay, revolutionary. We're not gonna scratch the floor. We also want the furniture pads because something that you're doing that is making your house just look bad, look cheap, is that you have wobbly furniture. If it is not a rocking chair, you shouldn't be able to rock back and forth. That is the fact of the matter. There should be no rocking if it is not a rocking chair. That is all, that's all I have to say. You know those chairs where you like, if you, if you move just like a centimeter, you just like go falling over. Don't do that. What you can do again is you can get these furniture pads. Let's open them up. 
They even have these clear ones. You just put them on the bottom of your chair or that piece of furniture. You stick it to there and it just like levels it out. So just level it out. You're like, Kiva, how do I decide which one is the right one? How do I figure out the size? Well, it's all about creativity here. I would say get a newspaper, um, you know, get an edition where the crossword offended you, you couldn't figure it out, so you're mad about it. Get the newspaper and just fold it up different times and figure out the level and see if the thing keeps rocking. Then take that size of that newspaper and match it up to one of these. Sure, you could use like a ruler or something like that, but we're all about doing things in a way that um, is easy and doesn't require too much thought, right? Because design, it doesn't have to be cumbersome. We can use um, normal rudimentary things to get that look for less. So this one is really, really cumbersome some but it really changes the space something I see people fail to do all the time it's clean their baseboards so you have the scuff marks you have the dust you have that the whole nine yards and there's like a whole different it's like an accent wall but on the baseboards and I know baseboards are really cumbersome to clean because they gotta bend down it's inconveniencing you can't see the television when you're sitting on the floor I understand it's not something that everyone wants to do but it looks so much better when a wall just looks really nice and clean because the scuff marks it makes it seem really dirty it makes it seem like like you're not caring for this space and you can't see that paint because a lot of the time people actually paint their trim a different color from their walls and it establishes a really nice contrast and it normally establishes a contrast actually that helps the room feel bigger so if we're not cleaning off that dirt if we're keeping the scuffs it's actually making the floor look dark and then it's making the whole room feel smaller which again is something that we don't want to do because big is always good especially in really high traffic areas we want to keep our spaces feeling as open as possible because they're just easier to live in in that way so if you're feeling confused about actually how to successfully clean a baseboard, of course you can like get your scriffer, you can get like your microfiber towel and scrub it. But I have found that actually using a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser is like the best way to do it. Pretty much everything comes off. You know me, you know my wife. I'll like throw like a, like a sofa into the wall and I'm like, oh my God, like why did that scratch the wall? The Magic Eraser literally cures everything. It is perfect. Um, it gets all the scuffs off. It doesn't matter how old they are and it just leaves the space looking nice and sparkly clean. And again, it keeps the floors looking really nice and bright and uncluttered. So it helps our pathways feel a lot larger, which is really, really good. Another oversight that I often see is that people don't actually purchase rug pads. And people all the time are like, it's a scam. I don't need to pay $40 for a rug pad, I don't need it. And I used to be right there with you until one day I went flying across my room and I do not have wings, right? So you do need the rug pad because it keeps your rug in its actual place. One, it's really, really easy to slip on without a rug pad, especially if you have a rug that is high quality. If your rug is not made out of plastic or something like that, there is nothing gripping the floor, so it's just like sliding along the way. Um, so that's not good, it's easy to slip. And two, your rug just doesn't stay in place. The point of a rug is to anchor a space. So it's really defining your living room from your dining room or something like that. It's really adding something to the space. But if it's crooked, then the whole space looks off, right? You're like, oh, is the sofa not at the right angle? Did they move the furniture incorrectly? Did they lay it out incorrectly? Are they in the process of turning over things? You don't know what's going on. And I know it's not about what other people think. This is what I'm thinking about myself in my own house. I'm like, what did babe do? Is babe trying to do something? Is babe a designer now? What is babe up to? Like, am I going to lose my job? Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the point is, is you just want your house to look cohesive and put together all the time for you, especially since we're stuck in the house all the time. So we want the rug pad not only so that people don't slip, but we want the rug pad because it keeps our rug in place. Another oversight that I see all the time is that people don't caulk their baseboards or their seams in their accent wall. And I'm telling you, it just leaves things looking kind of unfinished. It makes it look like you just have like a piece of wood sitting on the wall as opposed to a piece of wood that you've built into the wall. Um, it's not even about what, again, it's not about what other people think. It's just about everything looking seamless so that it looks like it is something that is natural with the home. Every addition that we're adding to the space, we want it to look built in. We want it to look custom. We don't want it to make it seem like it's like an add-on that we're just going to pack up and take with us when we leave. So if you're doing that DIY accent wall or if you're adding baseboards, just be sure to get some caulk as well. Caulk 
is really affordable and it also is protecting your wood, especially if you're in a space that has a lot of moisture or something like that, like in a bathroom project. You want a caulk to make sure there's no moisture getting into that wood and you also just want it to seem seamless because you're adding something on top of a wall. A wall in itself is seamless, right? So if you're adding anything to it, we have to make it look as natural as possible. Caulk is how we do that. It's really easy, it's really affordable. I honestly recommend investing in a good caulk gun. They're like $10 as opposed to a dollar at the Dollar Tree. They're a lot easier to use and it really adds probably like 10 minutes to whatever project you're doing and it just elevates the space so, so much. The next thing you're doing that is ruining your home is that you are trying to pursue a design style that just doesn't work for your space. You know, I, I'm a believer that you can do anything, anything is possible if you just believe, well, this is, this is one of those things where you just be lying to yourself if you believe that. And let me explain more what I mean by that. So let's talk about my home. Let's put myself on blast. So we live in a home that is very industrial. We live in Pittsburgh, it is Steel City. There's a lot of exposed piping. We have the nice reclaimed wood. We have the nice um, gray floor. It's really industrial. Our home is industrial. And I walked in here on day one and I was like, this is my farmhouse, you guys. This is my farmhouse. I had signs everywhere. I had the blankets everywhere. I, I had an entire Kirkland store in my house and at the end of the day it didn't work I'm glad it didn't work because that style is so not me I am NOT a white mom in suburbia but another reason why it didn't work is because it just didn't work with my home farmhouse is really nice and cozy and homey and it just looked really bad in contrast to everything else I had in my home I have a beautiful home, it has so many great architectural features, and instead of playing them up, I was trying to disregard them, which made it just feel like the house could not possibly flow. So what I did is I cultivated a design style that worked a little bit more with the bones of my home. You can always have a design style and transfer it into a new space, but it does involve a little bit of tweaking. So in this current home, it's a lot more industrial, so our house is probably a little bit more modern than it will be in our next home, if that home is, you know, in the countryside and then there's a lot of open windows and there's a lot of grass and pastures and all that good stuff your circumstance really impacts your design style and when you try to force something that just isn't going to work it just ruins your home because it doesn't flow it feels out of place and people can't really figure out what it is you're trying to achieve something else that is ruining your home is that you are you know creating layouts that just don't make any sense so sometimes people really want their house to look good and they don't think about practicality. So they'll take their sofa and they'll put it right in front of the pantry door and you're like, but I'm hungry. <laughs> but I want a snack. <laughs> How do I get any food, right? And you gotta move the entire living room around just to get a pack of fruit snacks. That is just impractical. And it just really ruins your home because again, your home doesn't have any flow. It's not a home meant for living in, it's a home meant for looking at. I really want you to, instead of thinking about how a space looks, ideally, I want you to think about looks and practicality. I tell you this all the time, go online and do your layout online have your windows in there, have your fire exits in there, have your doors in there, have all the things that you actually have in your house factored into your design plan so that you can figure out exactly where things need to go. If you don't wanna do that, we're using furniture pads now, people. Remember, I keep picking these up because this is what I don't want you to forget. Don't do this anymore. Get the furniture pads and just scoot your furniture along in your house then and figure out where you can put it and put it in a place that makes a lot of sense. I'm telling you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna criticize myself again. Hopefully I can find a picture of this since they're here so we can all laugh together. Um, but I was really, really into having like our parallel sofa arrangement in the middle of the living room. And that meant that you couldn't actually get into the guest room or the pantry. So we actually had my friend come stay with me and he had to just like climb over the sofa to get out of the room. It was quite, it was just idiotic, right? So it looked really nice, but it is impractical and you're ruining your home because there's going to be a point in time where um, that impractical living just frustrates you and then it just turns into complete disarray, right? And that's not better. So let's just kind of work with how we actually live, be realistic with yourself and your lifestyle and style around that. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Those are the things that you are doing that are ruining your home. On the day-to-day, -day, it might seem minuscule, it might seem minor, but at the end of the day, these things are ruining your home and if you fix them, your house is gonna look better and it's gonna feel better. If you liked today's video, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, have a beautiful day.